Good morning and welcome to the Coshocton County Youth Leadership Pay It Forward Project Presentations. My name is Betsy Gaznow and I am the Executive Director of Leadership Coshocton County and Coshocton County Youth Leadership. Thank you to the Coshocton Foundation and Foundation Trustees for providing funds for this project which started with the CCYL class of 2017. Since that first year, over $10,000 has been returned to the community, not including those projects which have further levied their funds for a greater community impact. There are many organizations and individuals who contribute to the success of this project, including our funders, the Dunmeyer and Simpson Family Funds, and Leadership Coshocton County. Finally, a very special, special thank you to Claxon Communications for providing the live streaming services for this project. The impact of each individual project is not measured by financial contribution, but by what the giver learned about stewardship and philanthropy. It has always been the hope and goal of this project to develop lifelong philanthropists among our young leaders. Please join me in welcoming members of the CCYL class of 2024 as they, sh as they share how they made a difference in the lives of another as well as themselves through their Pay It Forward projects. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brody Stevens. I'm 17, and I attend Shotgun Christian School. And upon leaving the January program day, I was not sure what I wanted to do with $100. I knew I wanted to make it grow in some way or another. And I talked to my school, and I was trying to figure out people who I could uh, give the money to and raise for. And they told me about this family named Callahan's. And they had a daughter who was 13, and she had cancer. And it was really, immediately, I just thought that's who I wanted to safe for and I don't know I just thought about it and I was thinking about what I could do and the first thing that came to my mind was Krispy Kremes because I've done it before in the past with 4-H and other things and I was really excited about it and so I just started figuring out places I could go and I found Can or Akron and I headed to Akron and got some orders and I got papers filled out and I got in touch with the pastor at Fresno Bible Church and I asked if I could share a little bit about what I was doing and see if it was possible if I could sell donuts there. And he agreed and said it was fine. And so I just went there and I started selling donuts and I got a lot of orders and a lot of donations the first day. It was really cool. And it was really cool to see how generous everyone was and willing to give. And I was really hyped about it. I was really excited about it. It was just super fun. And so then I went to Akron, I got the orders put in, bought the donuts back. I ended up buying a lot of extra too, just in case. And that next Sunday, I sold all of them. And it was really cool. And on top of that, almost everybody gave over what I was asking for donuts. And many people donated $100, $50, and just lots of money there and there, and all over the place. It was crazy. And then I ended up having more orders overfilled. So I went and extended the fundraiser another week. And so then the next Sunday after that, I got 35 more dozen donuts, and I sold all of them except for eight, and so I sold the rest to my soccer team, 
and they were very happy, and I made sure they had to eat it after the game because we're trying to play a game and not eat donuts. And then I was just blown away, and it was really cool to see what everyone was doing and how it impacted everybody's lives. And people at church were telling me that they had people who, relatives who had cancer, and that they had passed away, but that it meant something to them to be able to give and help and support somebody who's doing something good. And it made me feel good. And it's really, really cool to see. And so I scheduled a time to meet the family. And they also attend Kishokan Christian School. Uh, her daughter does. And so I kind of knew who she was. So I got in touch with them. And I scheduled a time to meet. And so I headed to Kishokan Christian School the one day. And I met. And it was cool to see and officially meet the parents and see who they were. And they were just really excited. And before I could even say anything, they were like, bless, God bless you, and thank you so much for what you've been doing in our lives, and you're such a blessing to us. And it was really, really, really cool, really cool. And I was just speechless. I didn't know what to say. And so I just decided uh, I was just going to go ahead and go right there. I started talking to them, and I was telling them how it went, and it went well, even better than I expected. And... I, they were relieved and they were just really excited about it and so I had raised a decent amount of money and so I took two folders one I had five hundred dollars in it and I said here is five hundred dollars that I raised and just that amount they were so happy and relieved and in disbelief it'd be like my mom was talking to me the other day it was like if a four-year-old four came up to me and said here's five hundred dollars it's like to them it's really crazy like how did you get all this money and I just was really excited about it and it was cool and it made me feel good and they were honestly so excited to see that and and everything died down and they were talking they were crying and having a good time and every, once everything died down I talked to them and I was like well there's actually one more thing here's just another thousand that I raised alongside of it so in total is fifteen hundred dollars with Krispy Kreme and it was really cool to see, and it was just amazing how it all came out and went together. And to many of us, $500 might not seem like a lot, but to them, it was, it was cool. To them, they were excited. And just having $500, they would have been happy, and immediately they were like, we're going to pay off book fees with it. It's going to help with so many things. And then when I gave them the 1000 they I mean, the dad's mouth literally dropped open. It was so cool to see, and it was really exciting. And... I just felt fulfilled and excited for what I'd been able to accomplish, but at the end of the day, it wasn't about what I could do. It was about what I could do for them, and it was really exciting to see, and it made me feel good. Um, thank you for listening, and I hope you guys can enjoy the rest of these speeches, and have a good time. Good morning. My name is Sophia Skellen, and I'm a junior at Coshocton High School and a member of the CCYL Class of 2024. When first gifted my $100, of course I didn't know what I wanted to do. But one thing I knew was that I wanted to see the impact I was leaving, and I wanted it to go to something I was involved in. At my school, our prom is planned by the junior class officers. I myself am a class officer. When we first began the process of planning prom, it was brought to our attention that each ticket cost $60. This blew my mind. It seemed outrageous. I myself have never been to prom, but I never imagined a ticket costing this much money. And to add to this, because of this outrageous price, only about one-fourth of each of the junior and senior classes were able to attend. Hence, I saw a need to lower the price of the prom tickets. I believe that every junior and senior should be able to get the prom experience that their high school years should entail. Therefore, I met with my class officers and we came up with a plan of how I could reach this goal of lowering the price of the tickets. We designed a flyer that had four different donation options. There was a bronze level of $50, a silver level of $100, a gold level of $200, and a diamond level of $250 or more. I also typed up a letter that I sent to each of the businesses that explained by project how their donation would be used and sorry, and how they could reach me if they were interested in donating. 
After a few weeks, numerous donations started piling up in my mailbox. It truly was eye-opening. I never imagined this. I never realized how easily our community could come together to support such a small cause. I felt very grateful for all the very generous donations. So I made sure to express my gratitude back to these generous donors, and I wrote each of them a letter thanking them for their various generous donations. After counting up all of the donations, I had raised a total of $1,150. To think that I had only started with $100 and now I had more than 10 times the amount was amazing. It blew my mind. My class officer, sorry, this may not be enough to completely alleviate the price of the tickets, but it certainly is enough to lower the price of the tickets to help these students. My class officer advisors were extremely proud of my hard work and they were amazed with how much money I had raised. Knowing that each of these students will be able to attend prom at a more affordable cost was truly heartwarming, and it made me feel like I had done something within our small community. I would like to thank the Coshocton Foundation for donating the $100 and enabling myself to truly embrace what it means to pay it forward. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Lexa Williams and I am a junior at Riverview High School as well as a member of the CCYL class of 2024. Um, I've, really, I've really enjoyed working on my Pay It Forward project the last several months and I'm excited to share it with you all today. But that being said, my story actually begins a few months back in September of last year. For those of you that don't know, I have been a sixth grade camp counselor for the past three years. And every September, I look forward to attending camp with a brand new group of sixth graders. As I'm sure you can imagine, I usually grow very close with the girls placed in my cabin. I guess there's something about spending every waking moment of four days with someone that can bond you. But this past year, I had a really special group of girls. Um, one in particular, though, stood out to me from the very beginning. See, Esther Miller, Esther Miller is a sixth grade girl who was placed in my cabin and the impact she made on me during those four days at camp this past year kind of fueled my passion and my pay it forward project the following months. Um, Esther comes from a large family of eight and at the time of camp, her younger brother Andrew had already been fighting terminal brain cancer for a year almost. Um, before the kids arrived at camp, an advisor had shared this with me in the hopes that I could kind of watch out for her at camp during what had to be a confusing and heartbreaking time. But the girls arrived at camp that next day and I was kind of blown away by the joy and the compassion and just the hope that Esther showed to everyone despite what she and her family had been facing. Um, it was inspiring to me to see this little girl who was facing so much darkness and sadness in her life and yet she chose to speak these words of light and life into everything around her. So the rest of camp flew by and Esther just, she continued to amaze me with her joy as she shared bits and pieces of her life with us and their journey with Andrew. And as camp came to an end, I hugged her and said a little prayer for her because she really had just kind of touched my heart in those short few days. In the weeks that followed, though I was home from camp, I never forgot about Esther and Andrew and their family, and I started following their journey through Facebook. And I soon came to find out that Esther wasn't the only one in their family to possess that strength and hope and those words of light. So in post after post, whether the update on Andrew's health was good or it wasn't so good, their family just continued to speak these words of hope and strength and gratitude, just like Esther did that week at camp. Not to mention how valiantly eight-year-old Andrew was fighting those aggressive cancer cells attacking his entire body, despite the doctors telling him that he likely wouldn't make it to his ninth birthday on December 12th, which he did with a smile on his face. But months and months went on, and about this time we were expected to start our Pay It Forward projects. I immediately knew what to do with mine. I felt like God had placed this family in my heart and in my life, and I wanted to do everything I could to bless this family with the opportunity that I'd been given. So I quickly got to work, and using the $100 I had been given, as well as dozens of donations from family, friends, and community members, my vision, Christmas for a Cause, started coming to life. 
My idea was to host a Christmas-themed family fun night that I dubbed Christmas for a Cause, where people from all over the community could pay to do various activities with all the proceeds going to Andrew and his family. Um, I hosted this event at Riverview Intermediate School, and I charged $10 per child to get in. There was cookie decorating, ornament painting, coloring, and plenty of snacks. And I come from a very crafty family, so in the gymnasium we had games that my family and I had created. Best of all, though, was the surprise visit from Santa, where kids could talk to Santa, sit on his lap, tell him what they wanted for Christmas. Ultimately, it ended up being such an incredible night seeing people show up in support of Andrew and his family and just seeing the community come together to support them. In the following weeks, I continued to collect donations from people who heard about my project and wanted to help contribute. And I was overwhelmed by the kindness and generosity that was coming from all directions. And I was so excited to give the Miller family the money that I had raised. I could only hope that it was enough to make a difference, no matter how small. When the time finally came, I was able to gift the Miller family $2,217. This money could be used for medical bills, fun experiences, or whatever else the family thought would be a good idea as cancer continued to ravage Andrew's body. He continued to fight, and the family embraced me with such genuine love and gratefulness that told me the months of my hard work and stress had been worth it. Ultimately, I am so thankful I was able to bless such an incredible family that not only inspires me, but everyone to have joy, smile, and trust that God will get you through whatever life throws at you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carter Kelly, and I go to Ridgewood High School. And when I was given my $100 for this uh, Pay It Forward project, I really had no idea what to do. Um, so I asked around, and I was, uh, I talked to Superintendent uh, Maslowski at Ridgewood Schools, and he had told me about our Blessing Bags program, uh, which was in need of money. And I have a little um, statement from them about the Blessing Bags that I'd like to read for you so that you can know what the Blessing Bags are. Blessing bags for Ridgewood local schools are care packages assembled with non-perishable food items aimed at providing nourishment and nutrition to students during weekends and holiday periods. These bags typically contain essential food items that can sustain students when they may not have access to regular meals, ensuring they receive adequate nutrition during these times. The contents may vary but often include items like canned goods, granola bars, fruit snacks, peanut butter, crackers, and other shelf-stable items that can easily be stored for consumption without refrigeration. These bags serve as a supportive resource for the students, helping to alleviate food insecurity and ensuring their well-being outside of school hours. So when I was approached um, and they told me they needed money for their program, I heard about the Pay It Forward project and I knew that's where I had to go with the money. The Blessing Bags spends $13,000 to $15,000 annually uh, on the bags for students and they deliver 125 bags a week. They also enlist the help of the West Lafayette Methodist Church to distribute these bags. I held a bake sale at a girls basketball game last Wednesday and we're also holding one tonight um, to raise money for the cause. So far we've raised $120 on top of our original $100 because we had all donated baked goods. So, so far we have a total of $220 but we are doing another bake sale tonight. Um, I chose to donate to them obviously because it's personal to me since these students are students that I go to school with and live in the community that I live. For me, it felt really good to donate because of this personal aspect. I knew some of the students that use these and I knew that the community needed this very much. The recipients of this also, uh, like Superintendent Maslowski, were relieved to hear that I was giving money to this program and they were very excited to accept this donation because they needed the money so badly at the moment. The impact of this program across the community is vast and it affects many different families that are in need. The program also works directly with families who need uh, food and it gets them food in times of need. Thank you. Hello. 
My name is Courtney Snyder and I am a junior at Shockton High School and I'm currently in the CCYL class of 2024. When I first got my project, I had no clue what I was going to do. And finally, one of my teachers gave me the idea of starting a closet at my school. So I decided I'd take my $100 and multiply it to try and raise money for clothes and essentials that kids at my school need. So I decided to make a basket filled with a bunch of stuff from around the community. And those places were Rust Decor, Canal Cargo, Coshocton Supply Company, McKenna's Market, Dean's Jewelry, and Hannah Marie's. And I just filled the basket full with stuff, about, I want to say, $250 worth of stuff. And I decided that I would raffle it off. So I sold 62 tickets in over two weeks, making $620 for $10 a ticket. I also received during that time 60 pairs of boys and girls underwear, 25 shirts, 52 hoodies, five, pant, five pair of pants, and so many socks just for kids at our school. I also went to my church and asked them for donations such as clothes, not thinking that I would receive any money. Little did I know, um, the Presbyterian women gave me $100 and also the deacons gave me $100. And then I received a very generous donation of $500 from the Coshocton Elks Lodge. So overall, out of, out of pocket donations, I raised $363, just from people in the community thinking that they could help me make a difference at my school. So I raised $1,683. And then I got the chance to have a donor come in and match what I made. So with my anonymous donor, I raised $3,366 just to go and buy clothes for the kids at my school who need them. Uh, during this time, I sent out a survey to the student body asking them to fill out the survey of what they needed and what I could help provide for them. So many people responded and it was just reading the responses from some of them, knowing that I could help them very easily, just really made my heart warm. Uh, I had lots of help from my guidance counselors helping me send out this uh, survey and avid, avid announcements about it, getting people to fill this out so I could help them. Over the course of the survey being sent out, I received over 50, uh, 50 responses and I finally got to help some of them so far. Uh, I named the closet the Tomahawk Closet, and it has started, but it hasn't really started yet. We uh, let a couple people come in, and they get to pick out what they want, and s watching some of them go through the baskets and seeing what they need and pulling stuff out and just getting a smile on their face when they finally get what they need just really made me smile and think that I did something in their lives. Uh, I really want the closet to stay like in habit, so I am putting some of the money off for now, saving it just in case we need some more clothes later because we do have a lot of students who are in need of clothes. So we need to save some of that for now. But I plan on spending all of that money at either Walmart or a quick place I can go and just buy a bunch of clothes, socks, underwear, winter gear, and things that students need at my school. Lastly, I would like to thank the Coshocton Foundation for giving me this amazing opportunity to make a difference in the student body's life. Uh, it was a real eye-opener for me, and I'm really thankful for that. And I would also like to thank everyone who helped and contributed to my project, making this possible for me and my students. Thank you. Wow, really easy job to follow all those up, right? <laughs> all right. Hello, my name is Allie Fisher. I currently attend Riverview High School, and I'm a part of CCYL's graduating class of 2024. For my Pay It Forward project, I decided to choose the animal shelter and you'll see a few of my other classmates decided to, too. When first given the idea of $100, can you guess what I'm about to say? 
I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> um, seeing as I live a very comfortable, I guess, sheltered life, I didn't really have many organizations or charities that I thought were any type of personal to me that I could donate to. Even though I've never really, like, interacted or had anything to do with the animal shelter, I've never surrendered a pet or adopted, um, I still have this great love for animals that I thought I could put to use with this project. And I figured, why not help somebody or some animals that can't help themselves? Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a part of my high school swim team. And with it being one of the longest sport seasons, um, I kind of had to put this project on the back burner for a while. But throughout the season, um, I decided to get like small starts, just take it one step, step at a time. Um, to start off, I went onto their website and did some researching, did some digging, figured out what would be the best approach. And I found that they had an email that I could contact, so I sent them a quick message seeing how we could possibly collaborate what would be the best approach. After some emails and after some research, I decided that donations, not necessarily in the monetary sense, would be the best approach from family and friends because, like I said, I'm an athlete and I'm also part of student council and a bunch of other things in school, so I am almost constantly asking my family members for donations, which is really just nice of me. So instead of money, I decided to ask them for maybe some old blankets, some old towels that they weren't using that they'd be willing to donate. And wouldn't you know, I'm related to some borderline hoarders that were just <laughs> eager to clean out their closets. <laughs> Um, I ended up accumulating three hefty trash bags full of old towels and blankets that I will circle back to at the end. After getting these, I decided to actually go to Walmart and use the $100 I received. And I was kind of scared once I first got there because, well, dog food, a big bag of dog food is like 35 bucks. I'm like, well, there goes a third of my budget, more. Um, but the animal shelter had a wish list on Amazon that really helped guide me through this shopping trip. So I was able to kind of plan out what I wanted to do, where I wanted to spend it, stuff like that. And I decided that a majority of my budget was going to go towards cleaning supplies, seeing as they'd probably use all that faster. Um, and I also got, with cleaning supplies, I got like dog food, as I said, and some treats for the pets. And the grand total ended up being $99.70, and the other 30 cents I gave to my mother for being my personal chauffeur for the day. <laughs> and after a few days of figuring out schedules, I finally was able to go and drop off all the things, all the items I accumulated over the few weeks. Um, the volunteer at the shelter was very friendly. She made sure to thank me a bunch of times. She helped me unload <coughs> everything. And it was really heartwarming to see how this volunteer, obviously she's not getting paid for this, she's volunteering, how she was just so open and so welcoming to help out. Um, throughout this whole project, it was very eye-opening to see just how easy of a difference I could make with such little... Yeah, with so little. Um, it showed me that a small act can lead to great outcomes when your heart's in the right place. And like I said before, with the towels and blankets, even after all of this, some family and friends are still reaching out asking me if I can take some things off their hands. So I will be donating more. <sighs> um, I would like to say thank you to Betsy and the Kashokan Foundation for this great opportunity to help out my community. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Maddie Holland. I am a junior at Riverview High School and I also attend the Coshocton County Career Center. Like most of us here today, I decided to make the money from my project to benefit something that I am passionate about. Let me start with a question. When you think of the word first responder, who do you think of? 
You may be thinking of the police officers, the firefighters, or the paramedics, but they aren't the true first responder. The, fir the true first responder are the 911 dispatchers. I recently got the opportunity to shadow two of the dispatchers for my program, the Business Professionals, at the Coshocton County Career Center. Once I left the sheriff's office, I knew what I needed to do with the money. I will be honest, I struggled with what I should do with the money. I ran through many different options and they all fell through, unfortunately. That one has been one of my many career choices for after high school. Shadowing the dispatchers made me, realize, sorry, made me realize how underappreciated the 911 dispatchers really are. 911 dispatchers do not get as much credit as they deserve. They play, a pu excuse me. they play a huge part in helping the community. When you call 911, you aren't talking to the police officers, the firefighters, or the paramedics. You are talking to the ones behind the scenes, the, the dispatchers. I decided to use the money to make appreciation baskets for Courtney Albertson and Denise Stotts of the Coshocton County Sheriff's Office. Each dispatcher gave me a list of their favorite things, including snack, candy, drink, and their favorite scent for a candle. I got that list so I could make sure that the products in the basket were something that they would appreciate. I also made customized keychains with their name on them. I also made them each a tie blanket and a sign that my parents made from their business that has their name engraved on a sign with a flag and a headset. Doing this project made me realize how good it makes you feel when you help others in the community. I felt amazing when I gave the dispatchers their gift baskets and it, it made me even happier when I saw how their face lit up when I brought them to them. It was something that ne needed to happen, and I wish it would have happened sooner. I'd like to thank Betsy and the Shockton Foundation for making these projects happen. Thank you. Hi, my name's Kylie Miller. I'm a junior at Riverview High School, and I'm a mem member of the 2024 class of CCYL. When it came to my project, I went through many ideas trying to figure out what I could do to best spend my money. I finally decided on donating my money towards a Christian-based organization located in West Left in Newcomer's Town called Blessed Again. Blessed Again takes donations of new, new or gently used items, um, personal hygiene, and like clothes for a lot of smaller children and also adults. I chose to do this project because I wanted to be able to help people who truly needed it the most. The organization was also able to provide me with a list of items that they take and like what they, the items that they take and like what they don't take. Um, so since they were able to provide me with a list, I knew like what I could get and that my money would be well spent towards the cause that I wanted to, the cause that I wanted to support. Being able to donate the items to the organization made me feel like I had a great impact on a lot of people. Even though it seemed, even though it might have seemed like such a small act, and a lot of us might think that $100 really can't do anything, but actually I was able to provide a whole lot, um, a whole lot of like items for people who truly needed it. Um, I know that I know that the items might not have seemed like much to a lot of us, but it truly means the world to a lot of people. When I went to deliver the items, um, I headed up to Newcomer's Town, and when I got there, I just had to place the items in a couple of bins. So I really didn't have the chance to ask anybody like, who the items would go to or what they would be, what areas they would be donated to. Um, I can only hope that the items were able to make someone's day and help make an impact on somebody's life who truly needed it. I was completely surprised by the amount of items that I was able to purchase with only $100. I was able to, pro to provide 35 toothbrushes, four packages of toothpaste, two bottles of baby wash, bottles of baby lotion, diapers, wipes, 13 bibs, four blankets, women's, men's, little girls' and little boys' socks, and a few children's t-shirts. I would like to thank the Shockton County Foundation and their trustees for, my, for giving me the um, opportunity to provide this project.
Hello, my name is Maggie Lopper and I'm a junior at Coshocton High School and I'm also a part of the Coshocton County Youth Leadership Class of 2024. For my project, I knew I wanted to help out the children in our community, specifically the children at the elementary that I grew up going to. After meeting with the principal and guidance counselor at the elementary, they told me they were in need of social emotional learning books. Social emotional learning books are books about different things related to mental health, such as depression, anxiety, friendship, sh and striving to be perfect. I decided that <clears throat> would be what I put my $100 towards in hopes to make the most of it. I chose this because I know how significant mental health is in our society. I'm sure everyone here knows someone with a mental health disorder. I also want to work with children when I'm older, possibly as a speech pathologist, so I thought this would be the perfect project for me. According to the CDC Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one in six U.S. children aged two to eight years have a diagnosed mental behavioral or developmental disorder. These books can help empower children to understand and manage their emotions. Through a story, they can learn how to identify what is happening inside of them as they can relate to a character in the story going through a similar situation. They can also feel less alone and more confident knowing that they are not the only ones going through a difficult experience. As well, it can serve as a therapeutic tool providing a safe and comforting environment for children going through trauma, facing life obstacles, or struggling with relationship difficulties. One of my favorite books I donated is called The What Ifs by Emily Kilgore. It's about a little girl who is struggling with anxiety and is constantly wondering what if in the worst possible scenario. In the book, she had a piano recital and she was really worried and kept wondering what if. What if I mess up? What if I play the wrong key? What if no one claps for me? She then met a friend who was able to turn her negative what ifs into positive what ifs. And even after making a mistake during her piano recital, she was still rewarded with a thunderous applause. This to me was a great example of how these books can help children feel less alone and manage their emotions. With my $100, I was able to donate eight, oh, 10 books, eight for ages four to nine, and two chapter books for ages nine to 12 years old. Inside each book is a sticker that said it was donated by me, Coshocton County Youth Leadership. The plan is to have these books on a display in the library. Donating these books made me feel really good. Knowing that these books will be in the Coshocton Elementary Library for years to come and will be able to help out children for many generations made me feel rewarding. I will be going over to the elementary this year and next year whenever I can to read these books to the children. I haven't been able to go yet, but I'm sure that these books will make them feel understood and help them recognize what they're feeling. I would like to thank the Coshocton Foundation for giving me the opportunity to pay it forward in the form of a $100 bill. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Julian Rivera and I attend Coshocton High School and the Coshocton County Career Center. My charity that I chose is Blessed Again and they are stationed in Newcomerstown and for me, I thought it was a very good charity to donate to because they help very much in the community. They do very well. Well, they're a nonprofit organization, and they do very well with donating clothes, home appliances, and just anything for like smaller children. And they also give out. They also have a very good selection of toys for children who want to come in and just find something new, all for no cost. A main factor also in me choosing this organization is because they're very heavily faith-based and they just do amazing work in the community. With their current situation, they're always grateful for any donations of any kind. So for me, I feel that it's very important to me to donate to this charity because they're always, yeah, so they're always grateful for any donations and they, they rely on any donations from any neighboring churches or any organizations that help pay for rent to keep the, shop, to keep the shop open. So I believe this $100 will make a big impact for helping them pay for rent and keep the shop open. As the giver, I am very blessed to be able to give out this donation for I know that this, I mean, in the little way that I'm giving this $100 will make a big impact for them to keep rent. One of the ladies that run Bless Again, Sherry, said that they were very blessed and explained how much the money can help keep the charity open so they can help as many people as possible. 
I just want to thank everyone and the uh, Kashokton Foundation for donating this hundred dollars. Thank you. Hello, my name is Colton Conkle. I am a junior at Kashokton High School and I am a member of the Kashokton County Youth Leadership Class of 2024. For my Pay It Forward project, I chose to spend my $100 at Walmart buying things such as dog treats, cat treats, and cat food that the Kashokton County Animal Shelter requested. The Animal Shelter is an amazing place who never says no to any animal. They take in thousands of animals every year and makes every animal feel at home. I chose the Animal Shelter because I believe we should help those who can't help themselves. And there are too many hungry, abused, and neglected animals in Coshocton County. My family adopted our cat, Rocky, from the shelter and we saved his life and he has been with us for three years. While making this donation, I felt proud and honored to help better animals' lives. Just by giving my $100 to them, I changed so many. However, what made me feel even better was after I brought in all of my donations, just a couple of hours later, the animal shelter posted a picture on Facebook of two dogs they had just saved, and they both received a dog bone that I had brought in, which made me feel amazing. The animal shelter was extremely grateful that I chose them and told them how much of an impact I had made on them. Anything that the community donates to the shelter helps with the burden of caring for so many abused, unwanted, and neglected animals. Therefore, my family and I will be donating to the animal shelter more throughout our lives. Please take time and read on their website about all of the many things that you can do to help out or even check out their Amazon wish list. I hope my presentation gets you thinking about how much you can make a difference in an animal's life. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Sihan and I'm a student at Coshocton High School and the Coshocton County Career Center. So, as with many presentations today, when I first received my $100, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do with it. My mind was racing with thoughts and ideas of how I could help my own community and help better other people's lives, but I just couldn't come to one thing and I, I really, really struggled with finding an idea until I realize that something that most of us overlook all the time is the amount of homeless people in our town and even the community surrounding us. So with my $100, I decided to purchase $100 worth of goods that homeless shelters near us could use to help better people's lives. Um, those items included blankets, socks, razors, toilet paper, shampoo, conditioner, and cleanliness items that they could use to help keep the shelters clean. Um, I think it's important to address that our county does struggle with many issues that can lead to homelessness. And with that, contributing to homeless shelters can really improve like drastically the life of individual people. Homeless shelters do much more than provide just a roof. They provide things such as food, medical care, and a home for people that may not have one elsewhere. Also, when you donate, it feels like you're part of a community of giving back. It's a way of showing others we care especially those going through a rough patch. It's not just about the money. It's about what you can do with it, which is why I decided to directly purchase things people in need could use. Finally, I'd like to add that donating just feels good. In my personal experience, it feels amazing to help others. And for me, it's always been about the way that I could make others feel better. Knowing I might have helped someone get back on their feet, especially through one of the worst parts of their lives, is the best gift in my opinion. Um, so for my Pay It Forward project, I think that I definitely was able to help some people out there that may not have gotten help from other people or may not have known that there was that type of help available. So I'd like to thank everyone from CCYL, um, Betsy and Bob Pell for giving me the opportunity to give back to my own community. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Blaine Hosteller. Uh, I go to the Ridgewood High School in Coshocton County Career Center. 
I also did the animal shelter mostly because I have a good connection with animals. Any animal in particular. Uh, I got one big bag of dog food, two six packs of cat food, one tub of Tide Pods, and one bag of one jug of downy and two bags of cat treats. Just like everybody else, I really just struggled to pick what I was gonna get for my pay it forward project. When I heard about the animal shelter and eating everything, it just kind of clicked because I've grown up around animals my whole life. And it really just made me feel like I could make a difference in everybody's lives, getting an animal, keeping them safe. And the animal shelter just does a lot for everybody. And with them being just on a road where anybody can drop an animal off that needs it, and them having any supplies that they need, and it was just, it felt really good to donate with them being so grateful and with my mom being my chauffeur, she was annoyed with how much she had to drive me around. But um, yeah, it felt really good. And whenever I saw my picture on the Facebook page, that felt really good. Showed how much they appreciated it all and just how much people have told me how much of an impact I made on that business. And I just want to thank everybody that made it possible, letting me into CCYO. So, thank you. Okay. I'm Logan Fisher. I chose to donate my $100 to the Gentlebrook Christmas Family Project. Health Services of Coshocton County was a provider of home health and hospice services that served residents of Coshocton County up until their closure in 2022. In 2015, the home health staff began a special project where they raised money all year long through bake sales, craft sales, and providing lunches for a donation. Money collected would go towards providing a Christmas to local families in need. Once word spread, local retailers donated generous amounts of products and money to support these families that were in need. An invitation would be sent to the principals of the three local schools to nominate as many entries as they felt necessary. The schools were first asked for permission from the nominated families before sharing their circumstances with the team, which remained confidential the whole process. At times only one family would be nominated each year, and other times multiple families would be nominated from each school. Reading the stories of the families who were struggling right here in our town was difficult for the team. Often the decision for selecting families most in need was an emotional one. The administrator of Gentlebrook, who happens to be my mother, Tana Fisher, and another staff member would meet with the parents of the families selected to learn how they could help. They would specifically want to know what would be most helpful for the family, but also what would make Christmas more magical for the children. The stories from the families varied as much as their wish lists. Once a list was created, the team would get busy planning, shopping, and wrapping. I can remember helping, up, helping my mom pick up winter coats, gloves, and toys. At the time, me being five, I was mad that these toys weren't going to me. So. I would see these toys and I would get upset with mom and she would tell me that there are some parents and families that are more desperate than others and they need help. That was hard for me to understand, but I helped anyway. So not only necessities would be met like clothes and toys, but also hot water heaters, washers and dryers and prepaid propane for heating would be provided. A full Christmas breakfast and dinner was also provided for each of the families. Arrangements are made with the parents to deliver all these items to the house before the kids can see, so it would remain a magical you know, thing for the kids. The home health agency in Coshocton closed in 2022, but Lafayette Meadows, also owned by Gentlebrook, took over the special projects so not a year would pass without breaking the tradition. To date, dozens of deserving families and thousands of dollars have been given away to support these families that are desperately in need. So, the Tammy Gore family heard about the project and they also chose to donate. So, people like that are helping us expand and provide not only money to help these families, but also products 
that helps everyone. So I chose to donate my $100 to the Gentlebrook Christmas Family Project because it was one of the first examples in my childhood of giving without receiving. So me being nine, that was when I understood. Since then, I've been helping my mother. And I'm proud to say that my mom has started this Christmas mission and is still touching lives today. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hope Mickle, and I'm a junior at Riverview High School, and I'm part of the Coshocton County Youth Leadership Class of 2024. When I had the choice to choose who I want to take my money to, I knew exactly which two organizations I'd be choosing. Um, the first place I knew I wanted to donate to was the Blue Star Mothers 59 of Coshocton County. Um, they help military members and veterans. Um, in the community, they work in parades, they help on honor flights, um, they set up banners in Coshocton, Conesville, Plainfield, and they send care packages to many. Um, I attended one of their meetings so I could learn more about them and kind of what they do, and I helped, I mean, I didn't help, but I presented the check at that meeting also. Um, their meetings were ran like any traditional meetings. They have officials that run the meetings, like a president, secretary, and then they also have people that sit in on the meeting and help give ideas. Um, during the meetings, they talk about upcoming events and projects and how they can make them better and how they can get more people involved. Um, it was very interesting to be a part of it and to hear all of the people that have people serving or have had, ser had served. Um, the second organization I knew I wanted to donate to was Donate Life Ohio and that is the organ donation organization for Ohio. Um, organ donation has always had a special place in my heart as I know a few people that have been um, donors and I have a few people in my family that have been recipients. Um, the organ donation organization has helped thousands but there are still many waiting on that life-saving operation. Um, the money I donated in memory of Colin Shantz, I hope will help educate more people on the severity of how important it is to be an organ donor. Um, all of the Coshocton County Youth Leadership members were given $100 to spend on their Pay It Forward project. And along with the generous $100 that the Coshocton Foundation gave me, I was also given another $100. Um, to make the $200 bigger, I made a raffle basket with um, items from local businesses. And though this wasn't my project, I felt like I was helping my community by shopping small. Um, I sold my tickets for $10 each, and I sat at a few home girls basketball games, and I also sold them on social media. Um, just a few things I had in that basket was like an Ohio State shaped cutting board. I had a few gift cards, earrings, and a few other things from Roscoe Village and Main Street. In the end, I sold $360 worth in tickets, and I split the money, and I gave $180 to Blue Star Mothers of Coshocton and $180 to Donate Life Ohio. When I gave the check to the Blue Star Mothers of Ohio, I mean of Coshocton, you could tell how excited they were about it. They told me thank you the entire meeting until I left, and they sent me a thank you note in the mail. Um, when I had donated to Donate Life Ohio, it was a little different because I couldn't go meet someone. I had to send it through the mail. So I emailed Christopher, who's the guy in charge of the donations, and he sent me the address. Once the check made it to him, he made sure to send me thank you notes and told me how generous it was of him, of me to send it to him. And when I saw how the people reacted, it made me super happy, and I felt like I left an impact, no matter how big or small it was. Um, I would like to thank Coshocton Foundation for the opportunity and the donation. And I'd also like to thank anyone that contributed to my project and helped me. Thank you. How about another round of applause for our young philanthropists this morning? It truly takes a village to um, have a program such as this. Um, and you saw the impact um, that the youth have made on our community this morning. But not only the impact the community has had on them in terms of donations given um, for raffle baskets support, 
provided to these youth when they were uh, selling raffle tickets or Krispy Kreme donuts to take their money and, and leverage it to make a greater impact. Um, I also want to recognize and thank the local schools as well, Coshocton High School, Ridgewood High School, Riverview High School, and Coshocton Christian School and the Coshocton County Career Center. Without their support and encouragement of this program, um, and their willingness to allow kids to sell raffle tickets in the middle of the day um, or at, at athletic events is really amazing. And so I just want to thank all of you um, for providing this support for the youth. Um, so um, thank you again um, to everyone um, for joining us this morning. Um, thank you to the adults for your patience and your encouragement um, of the youth um, and kids. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we hear a lot, kids these days, right? We're all adults, we've heard that for how long in our lives, kids these days. But let me tell you, kids these days. Um, these are really an amazing, their hearts are very big, their hearts are in the right places and we saw that this morning. So thank you all again. Have a great day. Bob. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, lunch isn't quite ready there, getting ready.